everybody, welcome back to Pelvis Party. My name is Becky Montpetit. I am the owner of Rochester Local, and today I am joined by Tara Suffrens, nurse practitioner at Women's Health at Olmsted Medical Center, and Britt Marshall, marketing communications at Olmsted Medical Center. Tara is a nurse practitioner at Women's Health. What does that mean? Who do you see? How old are they? What are some things you treat? Um, so I see women primarily age 21 and older. Um, we see um, annual physical exams. Yep. I talk to women about um, irregular menstrual bleeding. I see a lot of women for um, any really women's health concern, birth control, contraception, mm -hmm. thinking about you know planning for pregnancy, infertility concerns, um, anything. STD screening. Um, I'm trying to think of everything. And so, what we're here to talk about today, UTI. You're in our chest yeah, infections. That's Yay. what I was going to say. Today we're talking about UTIs, everybody's <laughs> favorite topic. So you get a little message that comes across your screen and it says, help me, I think I have a UTI. Okay. What is your first step when someone comes into the office? What, why, you know, what, what are some of the questions that you might ask? Why is some, why would someone get a UTI? Um, what is the difference between maybe a one-time or a reoccurring UTI? Well, notoriously, someone calls on a Friday afternoon when they're leaving right. for vacation. Always. And they have something going on for the last couple of days. Right. It's never like, I have five hours of open time. Yes. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That was me last week. <laughs> this really just happened last week, so... <laughs> And oh. when I found out I was going to be on the pelvis party <laughs> and talking about UTIs. Wow. How convenient. True story, folks. Right? It is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, maybe a misconception is that when you have a UTI, you're dirty down there. Right. No, no, absolutely not. So I always say, I guess being female is a risk factor for getting urinary tract infections just because of our normal anatomy. Right. And then SEX. Uh -huh. Hey, the two in combination are um, very common and um, we get UTIs sometimes. Right. And so I think, um, right, you talked about one of the misconceptions right now is that you get these because you are dirty or you have not been um, properly uh, keeping yourself tidy or well <laughs> cleaned or maintained. I always say to women who feel that way or when they come into the office, guess what? I think most of us women by 21 have figured out hygiene. So, right. Hmm. Right. We have Probably figured it not out. It. So that's not it. Right. And how, how often do you meet um, with a friend or um, it goes like this? How are you feeling? Oh, I don't feel so good. What's going on? Uh, I have a but we always whisper them. Why are we ashamed of talking about something that is so... It's inconvenient. It's unknown. Right. And sometimes new. It's, it's so a part of our anatomy, but we've been ingrained and encultured, er, cultured to just talk about the, a UTI, which is so uncomfortable and so painful in kind of a shamed, whispered sort of fashion. I'm sorry. A UTI is something that we should all just be like laying in bed with our feet propped up about, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she says, mm-hmm. Yeah. They hurt, they hurt. So um, a patient comes into your office and how might you diagnose, treat this? Um, you know, a lot of times, probably 99% of the time, patients know that they have a urinary tract infection. Mm -hmm. They have burning with urination, increased mm -hmm. urinary frequency. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll have a little bit of a malodorous urine and just, not feeling well, mm -hmm. you might have a might have a low backache, mm -hmm. have a little bit of a fever. Yeah. Just know something's not right. Right, your bladder feels heavy. Oh. Like yeah, and it's not because you go to the bathroom and it's just trickle trickle. Uh, so disappointing. And I feel like right. that's another thing. Some that urinary hesitancy. You feel like you got to go, but you can't go. Right. So pretty classic signs. We often just do a quick urine test. It's a simple test. Right. Um, can we talk about that? Mm -hmm. So when you have this frequent urinary urge, when you have a UTI, is it that your bladder is actually full and you cannot void? Or is it that your urethra is irritated and it just feels like you have to go? It feels. So 
we call urinary tract infection because we it starts at the opening of the urethra. That's okay. where that bacterial starts and it can track up to the bladder, but it doesn't mean the bladder's full and we can't go. It's irritation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So is it just your brain telling you, hey, something's wrong down there and we don't really know how to fix it, so let's just try going to the bathroom to see if that's what's going to fix it? Okay, okay. So the are there any other... So we, we hear a lot uh, of times about just drink tons of water and it'll mm -hmm. go away. Um, people will oftentimes not want to make a, a, an appointment to come in and see the doctor. It's inconvenient. They don't want to. It's expensive. They don't want to pay for it. Um, they can't find the time in their calendar. Kids have one zillion activities. So they will treat at home. Yep. They'll take tons of cranberry. They'll take mm -hmm. cranberry extract. They will drink tons of water. Mm -hmm. And sometimes ward it off. Yes. What do you have to say about that? So I feel like they're all good things. Of course, we naturally are trying to push fluids to flush it out and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And there is proof to show that cranberry tablets and cranberry juice, but cranberry is kind of an antibacterial static mm -hmm. and it can help kind of flush. It will not treat a urinary tract infection if you have one. Okay. That's kind of full blown. It may help it and prevent it, but you still may end up in the eye. Okay. <laughs> so... What would happen then if a urinary tract infection went untreated? Most of the time, it's not going to. Sometimes if you get better, then it took care of itself. Okay. And otherwise, you'll be in the clinic. We worry about moving up to the kidneys. Uh -huh. So a kidney infection, but that's not that common. Okay. Most people are just so uncomfortable, they eventually make themselves come in. Okay. Yeah. I would. <laughs> yeah. Because you get on comfy. Yes. And when they move to the kidneys, that's a, that's a pain. They're sick. People are very sick. Right. They That's a pain good. unlike any other. So what would hap What happens when, okay, so a one-off. You have a one-off urinary tract infection, UTI. You get an antibiotic or you flush it out yourself, take cranberry extract. What happens when they reoccur? What happens when you keep getting them? Okay. Well, people can just get one um, just because maybe they mm -hmm. recently became sexually active or they mm -hmm. hadn't been and now they are, or with hormone change sometimes, we notice that, but um, we start talking about prevention. So how can we prevent it? So starting a daily cranberry tablet, continuing to push fluids, making sure you, ha you, know, you avoid after intercourse, mm -hmm. and um, trying to identify what the trigger is for you. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the other risk factors that might be associated with reoccurring um, UTIs. Feel like if when we talk about reoccurring, does the urinary tract infection actually get treated? So sometimes we think we treated it and the symptoms are persistent. So we just have to try a new antibiotic. So it's sometimes very simple. Um, but I guess where say that again as far as risk, how, fa just... risk factors. Really honestly, female. Yeah. Being female and um Really depends on when they're occurring. Yeah. Like, so yeah. what I really appreciate about yeah. Tara is, I had six this year so far, oh, which is just you uh, awful horror. So I thing. just thought it was coming back, or it never got nipped in mm -hmm. the butt, for lack of better words. And so Tara and I, we talked about, okay, when is it happening? What are the symptoms? Um, and we figured out it was post-coital or after sexy time. Mm -hmm. And so now we have a plan in place, and mm -hmm. we came up with that plan together, and it's working so far. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so for recurrent UTIs, then yeah. a couple different ways of treating are really just thinking, um, can we make some small lifestyle modifications sure. to prevent them? And or can we try something like if it is happening, happening after intercourse, then, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we'll do a one time antibiotic following intercourse mm -hmm. and okay. that can prevent it. And so we give a little supply of antibiotics okay. and someone takes one after intercourse and that can help prevent them. Uh -huh. If someone continues to have them, then we start looking at like daily prevention, which is sometimes using a low dose antibiotic sure. for anywhere for three to six months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So there's an abundance of ways to uh, address and di diagnose and uh, attack this problem, right? Which is what we're gonna do, we're gonna yep. attack this. I mean, no one wants a, a reoccurring UTI. Yeah. Yep. Um, so are you prone to UTIs at certain ages? I think I hear a lot about 
when you start to get older, past menopause, maybe UTI start to cramp, cramp, uh, creep up a little bit more okay. often. Is that true? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Some people luck out and never have a UTI, and we can say lucky. Wow, yeah. lucky. lucky. Uh -huh. But then I say, um, you know, I guess young age and becoming sexually active, we see it. Or we call it honeymoon phase for when somebody, you know, becomes sexually active. Yeah. And so, and then as we age, um, just the normal vaginal mucosa becomes less acidic and less, less protective, uh -huh. and we can be a little bit more prone um, to urinary tract infections. Now, if somebody has an infection, a vaginal yeah. infection like a yeast or a bacterial vaginosis, then that might set the stage for getting a urinary tract infection too. Okay. And so, the culture that you perform will tell you all like the pH and, right? It yeah. tells you certain things about that you can look for indicators of mm -hmm. something that's a little bit more serious yep. or. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of, I keep tests at home, azo tests or azo tests. Yeah. So, uh, you can get them over the counter uh, at Target or just on the shelf or whatever. Mm -hmm. Valid, invalid. I need to know. And I guess. Is it like a urine dip, just like they do at the lab? Uh, tell yeah, me more it's about just it. it's just something that's supposed to tell you, like, okay, if the probability of okay. you having a urinary tract infection. And then, so sometimes you're like, ooh, do I? Don't I? Do I? Don't I? And I don't want to go in, yeah, because I have, I have gone in before, and they're like, yep, you don't have one. Oh, you don't have one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it could be another irritation or something or whatnot. Yes. And I just don't. So I always say the, if it's a urine dip test, yeah. basically you're dipping a strip into yeah. a urine and then you hold it up next to the yes. bottle and it tells you the colors. We do the exact same test uh, at the clinic. Yeah. So that's the beginning test. Yeah. And so if we see something that shows a little bit more presence of bacteria yeah or you know the pH and we check a few factors on it. And yes, there's a high probability, but what happens at yeah. the office instead of at home is we look under a microscope, sure. the lab person does. Uh -huh. And we say, is what is the presence of bacteria? Okay. Okay. So, and yeah, uh -huh. so we get a little fancier, but, uh -huh. but so I always think about what are ways to have women come in and have convenience and not break the bank. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a UTI protocol through our nursing triage line. Uh -huh. So if they wanna come in, you know, if they call and say, hey, I'm leaving for vacation or I have a big event and I don't, or it works too busy, I can't get off today. There is a simple questionnaire that they ask. Yeah. And if you're not a person who has had recurrent problems or other major problems, we will treat according to protocol. Oh, so, so someone have to come in. Yes. Also, so, our fast care locations offer the dip test yes. for, I think it's $55 uh -huh. for to be yeah. seen at the fast care. I had to use that twice before uh -huh. I finally came in to see Tara. Yeah. So very familiar. So that's Simple. an option too. Yes, I and always, if it is presenting, then yeah. they will prescribe. Okay, great. Yeah. And I always say, if it's my patient and they've been seen and they're regularly seen, I will try to make life convenient. Hey, by the way, can you give me that antibiotic you gave me last year for just in case so I can put it in my purse, sure. tuck it in my pocket, pull it out when I need it. Yeah. And then I say, yes, I'm more than willing to yeah. do that. And so someone who has a little bit of tendency for maybe once a year or twice sure. a year to have that convenience. Mm -hmm. And my chart is a great way to communicate with your yep. provider yep. as well. Yep. Um, that way too. So. Yep. so some easy tricks. Super helpful information about a super inconvenient, <laughs> horrible issue. And I am very sorry to you. But it sounds like you've We're got taking yourself care. sorted yep. out, right? Yeah. But what do we say? Our motto, don't settle. Do not, do not suck it settle. up. Absolutely do not settle. If you have the tingle, the very familiar tingle, don't settle. Do not sit there in agony for 10 days when you could sort yourself out in two. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Tara, thank you so much for joining us on the Pelvis Party. Britt, always. It's always wonderful to see you. Thank you for joining <laughs> us on the Pelvis Party. For more information, go to rochesterlocal.com slash pelvisparty. party.